Hi, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. <laughs> hello, hello. It is summertime. Welcome back. Thank you. We had a nice trip. I, I would like. I to... didn't. I mean, I wasn't. I stayed here. She Will left you? me. Yes, I now did. Now it's my turn I to whine. I know. I took, a more, <laughs> I took a road trip. But I have to say a quick hello to Meredith and Shannon and Barbara, who stopped in at the shop Aww. right before I left. <laughs> but Holly and Debbie uh -huh. came up to me while I was in North Carolina. I met them for the first time. <laughs> it was one of those situations where they came up to affirm who I was and I was thinking to myself I wasn't sure there were a lot of people introducing themselves so I wasn't sure who it was and then, then she, the story unfolded she said I have a friend who stitches Aww, and she thinks cool. that you're on YouTube and she's sitting over there and then like within seconds Holly came over to meet me anyway hi guys uh -huh. it was nice yeah, to meet Debbie you. left a comment so hi Debbie did she oh, yeah all right yeah. <laughs> thanks Debbie Debbie said she was gonna go check us out oh that's cool um so just to let people know you were at a family function I was I in, was in the it was actually the high point was the, where we stayed in North Carolina, and we were in the sort of Raleigh, Colfax, I think, area, which okay. is kind of far apart, but that general area. <laughs> I didn't do the driving, so no, I didn't pay nice. too much attention. Yeah. I let Rick and uh, Siri navigate. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But it was a wonderful time. We had so much time to visit, and... Um, just like always it's never long enough yeah. and you have to say goodbye but hopefully we'll all um, be able to get together again before too long now that i'm able to travel again that was this was really experimental you know that because well, i haven't been on the road longer than two hours yeah and, and car rides are hard mm -hmm. you know for you and you do have to take time to recuperate but um i'm glad you're able to go yeah yeah so nice. that was we were in the car almost nine hours on the way down mm. and i was really surprised and how well it went really uh-huh i used the the seat back in like a lounge chair with the front seat okay. and just chilled <laughs> except for our i won't say the word right now because he's with me but <laughs> we had a few stops because um my buddy went along with us and uh he just got settled down so i'm not going to mention his name yeah. but it was a fun trip <laughs> a very fun trip and i stayed home <laughs> yes but you took a trip too, but it was a vertical trip. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> off the side of a building. Yes, yeah. you did. Now I was able to do the uh, eye drop again this year for. Um, so we repel off the side of a ten-story building, and Matt did not do it this year. I posted on Instagram. Um, once was enough for him, so somebody else from the company did it with me, and that was great. Colby was a. Um, it was his first time, and you could tell by the time we got up there on the. The rooftop where you do your last kind of like they show you what to do and your your last bit of training <laughs> your last moment yeah, yeah. <laughs> say goodbye <laughs> um before you go over the edge and, and you could tell he was excited but that nervous excitement you know and um but he was great he was so sweet because he actually got started before i did he was on rope a and i was on rope b okay he was so nice to kind of like wait for me you know, because he was already started. I'm going, Colby, wait up, wait up. Because they were still getting me off the edge. Oh, my gosh. It was fun. It was really fun. Um, so, and and it's a great, uh, it's a great charity. And, and they help so many people with um, with sight problems, all kinds of different uh, sight problems. And, and just getting to talk to some of the people there that they have helped. And, you know, I started thinking about that. Like, we love our stitching, crafting, quilting, all, all that stuff so much. But you know, it, it's such a gift. Your eyesight is such a gift. Yes. Oh, so it just was very, very, um, very heartwarming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then we had fireworks. We saw a gorgeous fireworks display. I had fun going to a picnic because we had a beautiful Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, we um, we weren't gone over Fourth of July, but we hadn't connected since yeah. before Fourth of July. Yeah, yeah. And then McKenna, one of her best friends that was in her wedding, then we had a wedding shower for her. So it's been busy, but yeah. fun. And also great pool days. The weather has been hot and just, you know, Liz was traveling and didn't get a lot of stitching done. I didn't get a lot of stitching done because I like to be outside. Out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, but it's all good. We have a lot of needlework. 
things to share mm -hmm. as well as a little bit of stitching that we did but we'll get to it <laughs> oh i didn't mention the the charity that um when we went over the edge it was it's it's called the eye drop is the whole uh, event but it was for vision core um the and, vision um, core when i first moved here was called the blind center okay okay and it had a lot of volunteers and yeah. people working there and then it then it changed but yeah really nice people yeah. that, that was that was great they provided a service for my aunt when i first moved here that i looked up and inquired about for her she can't see the tv she's legally blind and she couldn't watch anything on there and yet she couldn't read the newspaper she wanted to stay with current stay mm. current with events they had a radio and it was a closed circuit sort of system i'm not exactly sure how it works in the radio industry but if you got their radio put it in the room then all of their broadcasts came over that radio and she could hear them read the newspaper every oh, morning. Oh, that's awesome. So she was delighted, and that was a service that was done by volunteers. They went in on certain mm -hmm. days of the week, and they read their section that's out of the paper. Awesome. That's and awesome. my downstairs neighbor cool. at the time hooked me up. Her name was Catherine Keller, and she hooked me up um, with it because she was one of the newspaper readers. Nice. So, very, very cool. Yeah. And I will keep itching my nose because... <laughs> there's because some... I'm stopped. Now, I'm not yeah, doing it for there her is anymore. something, yeah... <laughs> Some kind of allergy out there that's driving me crazy right now. I don't know what it is, but anyway, we had um, just how it is. Uh, nice comments, thank you very much, and yes. a lot of emails. Um, and Liz and I loved reading the comments from our last uh, when we did our floss friends because we asked you to let us know what you were stitching, but you also let us know where you were stitching from. We love that. That is so exciting. Yes. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Um, let's see. Okay. Let me clear one thing up quick, um, which is about the code for the needle threader. It's in the description box on video 135, I believe. And what you need to do is go to that link. There is a code in the description box above that link. Copy the code, go to the link. Amazon will sometimes default you to a whole list of that same product. So you have to look for Captain H's store. And when you find his store, if it isn't coming up initially with the link, then you just go to his store. And when you check out is when you put in the passcode that gives you the reduction in your price. It worked gotcha. fine for me. Um, Deb and I ordered um, a couple of boxes of those needle threaders ourselves. And when I went out to place the order, that was the process I used, and I did notice that it does bring up all the shops that are tied to that product. So just take your time and you'll find it. Okay. All right. um, when I was at the shop this week, we had someone come in and they were looking to try. Yes, thank you. They were looking to stitch uh, something that I already stitched by Diane Arthurs called Bethlehem. And I said oh, I that I had used a Japanese silk called color wash and I loved it that's all I used was one color through the whole thing I had a good time with it it's it's a nice fun stitch um, so I just wanted to share that and what case. is this pattern called it's called Bethlehem it's called Bethlehem mm -hmm. okay gotcha yep and it's by Diane Arthurs yep love it and uh, your fabric this was an Ada fabric that had the iridescent in it I I do not remember the actual color name, but it's it's an over dyed Claire, sorry about that. fabric with an iridescent thread running through it. <laughs> We've got lots of light today coming yes. in. <laughs> Make sure you can see what we're showing you. Very pretty. And then we also had some people inquiring <gasps> about stamped cross stitch. Now, this is a well loved table runner. I kept it just because I did it, but it has. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our family meals reflected on the table runner but what i wanted to show Look, there's was mashed potatoes yes, gravy yeah, sweet gravy, potatoes and butter from the rolls so all i wanted to do was show you that once we st once i stitched it and washed it all of the ink for the for the actual stitch placement comes out that was the question people kept asking oh yeah how do you get rid of the ink? Yeah. I washed mine and then it was gone. It's water soluble, should come out, and mine did. And this was, in case you can't recognize, this was a false craft pattern. Um, and yeah. I had the dishware and when I saw this pattern, 
I knew I wanted to put it on a table runner. So I had this runner um, in mind, but then I saw it in a stamp cross stitch on this runner and it was um, through Hershner's, I think really? I found it. Yeah, so The I funny thing is, when Liz and I met, my dishes that I chose, my everyday dishes, when I got married was that false graph pattern. Yes, and, and then, was and that was the pattern that I got when I bought my house. Yes. And we and I moved here and she had the same pattern. So eventually <laughs> I got done using it because it was, to be honest with you, it was just too heavy for me. False it, graph it is, is heavy. It's very heavy, yeah. So it, yeah. now a lot of it lives at the, in the mountains. In the mountains, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah when yeah, we yeah, went out there. That was so cute though. I was like, we got, oh my gosh. I said to Rick, I said, recognize the pattern. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh that gosh. was funny. Um, <laughs> So I, I mentioned about the code. Let's mm -hmm. see. Um, there was a question about the Christmas tree pillow that I finished. It has the sort of modern tree on it. That was from a Just Cross Stitch ornament magazine. It was going to be, I'm thinking it was in the earlier 2000s issues. I glanced at all the covers, but short of having the time to go through them all, I couldn't locate the pattern, but hopefully you'll be able to locate that okay. pattern. Okay. Um, and find it, Sharon. And um, we had a comment from someone who was wondering when Liz and I, we like to uh, tape the edges of our fabric so that they don't fray all over the place and everything. And we have been using medical tape to do that. Doesn't matter what width you buy, you know, whatever you want. Doesn't even really the brand. I mean, we've tried different brands. We order it from Amazon. Um, does it leave a residue? Those kind of things. Um, yes, it will leave a little bit of residue, but we make sure that where we're taping it, we're not going to be using it's that margin. part of it. It's, it's way in the margin. Yeah. Right. So we're not going to be using that anyway. It gets either cut off or, well, yeah, it gets cut off or And it is somehow. nice to stitch through. If you have a, a, if you have a, a mount and you can use that taped area while you're lacing it in the back, that actually works kind of nice because it keeps it from fraying. Oh, yeah. When you're lacing it. Yeah. So I've left it yeah. on some of my smaller ones. Oh, really? Okay. I usually cut it off because it's just too much bulk. Mm. But either way, you know, it's, it will leave a little bit of residue, but it doesn't matter because you're not, that's all waste anyway. We've had a few people ask when we reference a uh, shop. The shop is our local needlework shop, Stitches Unlimited, that I'm now helping out at. So... Uh, if I reference that I just got this when I was at the shop last week, <laughs> it's not our shop. It's Pat Young's shop, and I help out on Wednesdays. Um, and uh, it will also be where our day treat is uh, being held. You'll be able to shop there during the day treat. So that's the one we're referring to. In the description box to our videos, you'll see where we list our local needle workshops, mm -hmm. the ones that Deb and I refer to as ours, and that's Stitches Unlimited, Hodgepodge, and Salty Yarns. Those mm -hmm. are the three in our neck of the woods that we go to. Yep, yep. We had a question about someone. I felt bad, too, because this is one of those questions when your heart goes, oh. She said, I have a section that I have to remove, and it's a really large section of stitches, and I'm having trouble doing it with a needle. It just seems problematic. So when I saw that, um, I thought, well, I do have a tool that I use. This one I bought it was called a boo-boo stick. And there have been different versions of them, and I'll tell you about the one that exists now. This is using a size 26 needle. What this is is actually a little piece of wooden dowel, and on one end it has a needle with the very top of the eye cut off, so it makes a little bit of a fork that you can slip into your stitches. The other one is the blunt end of your tapestry needle, and it's bent just the slightest bit so that you can easily slip it under a stitch. This is done with a size 26 needle. They used to sell them 24, 26, 28. Now they're sold by Rainbow Gallery and they're sold in size 24 and 26. I don't think 28 is available. Mm. Um, and you can go to their website they have rainbowgallery.com. Your local needlework stores probably carry them. I know Stitches Unlimited has them. So mm -hmm. that is what I would recommend for frogging <laughs> yeah. if you need something. There's one other item that we received 
this goes back to our very early videos if you wanted to look for it in a gadget corner <laughs> it's actually a medical implement it's Careful. a suture remover suture yeah i said yeah, that right suture. and it is a razor edge to this blade yes you literally barely drag it across the top of your stitches and the way it's curved <laughs> it just dissects them right there boom they're gone i mean it, there is no turning back from that one baby no and it does exactly what you'd expect for a suture yeah. removal it oh, just man. cuts those stitches boom. that is a good container to hold that baby in. it is yeah I, and i i put both of my things in this one yeah uh, this was a, a rear, weird shaped pen or pencil one time and i kept the oh. container and so I keep them both in there. That way I don't get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we had a few people who commented and also inquired by email about the sampler we did. Deb stitched it. I'm stitching it now called Autumn Quaker Sampler. It's by a German designer. Mm -hmm. We have it in our description boxes where Deb was stitching hers. We had all the information there that you could follow. But it's Weinerberg, I believe is the pronunciation. Um, it's carried at 123 Stitch. They have it. Um, a lot of places carry it. So Autumn Quaker Forest mm -hmm. is what you're looking for. And some people wanted to know the name of the fabric that it was stitched yes. on. And that's Valor. And we did it on 32 count. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very fun stitch. Beautiful. All DMC. So. Ignore all our references to antique green. Or light green. <laughs> I jokingly sent an email back to the woman who asked me about it. And I said, well, there were a couple of videos where we referenced it as. <laughs> so anyway, that's just a little uh, oh history of the channel. And then... Um, Rain asked me about Petite Velvet. It's a fiber that's used in needlepoint. Um, some people use it on cross stitch. You can use it in different things. It is just as straightforward as any other fiber. You put it from the card directly into your needle. I used a size 20 tapestry needle with mine. And the only thing is it is flat like you referenced, but it stitches the same as though it was a circular fiber you don't notice that it's flat but I used a laying tool. I was tool. just gonna say that's important I yeah. used a laying tool when I was doing it on a mesh that was small because Beautiful. that way it it made it lay nicely mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna show my kernel uh, needlepoint mm -hmm. later and I used it on that as well as my Santa chair so you'll get to see it in that yeah I don't think oh yes sorry yeah. Two people shared pictures with us um, that I thought you'd be interested in seeing. This is done by Pat, and it's her version of Happy Birthday America by Brenda Gervais. And she changed the side completely to be her own stitch that says God Bless America instead of that faux sampler fabric. Mm -hmm. And then she used some of the color changes that I uh, used on mine in her top. She did a really nice job she on that. She changed the basket color. Yes, that's what I did. I changed the basket oh, to picnic basket. It almost looked red. Yeah, sorry. No, it's okay. That, oh, okay. Um, picnic basket by um, Gentle Arts. Pretty. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, this is so cool. And then this <laughs> is, yeah. I had shown my Merry Christmas piece um, by the letter, the Lizzie Kate Merry Christmas. And this was done by Barbara. And she found a frame and she used it to mount her piece on. It was actually an Easter picture in a long, narrow frame. And she mounted her piece and put it over top of that. It has a gingham border. You'll see that. But what she did at the bottom was very clever. She took another Lizzie Kate pattern. Let me see if I can get it a little closer. You got it? Thank you. And she took the Lizzie Kate pattern and she added it to the bottom of that particular series. And I just think it's adorable. It's like Santa's presenting it to it you. It is. Yeah, it's so cute. So nice job, Barbara, on that one. Very cool. Enjoyed seeing it. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Very cool. So that's kind of our comments. Um, we have some needlework we worked on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did a little bit. Yes. Show um, yours. 
Let's see. So I was working, I got out the, um, the prim stitch, um, series, which I haven't picked up in a while. So it was so fun to pick it up. And, um, I actually worked on that a little bit outside by the pool because it's, it's just so easy to stitch on. Um, and I finished number four, which is kindness and generosity. So that's the, um, pattern and my magnets are all sticking together. This is my piece right here. And I did change um, a little bit of the, the stars there. Um, this is stitched on, I think it's 25 count Lugana and it's the prim color and it is stitched over one. Except for I did change a few things like this birdhouse here. I stitched that in like a, a stretched, like elongated cross stitch. And I am back stitching certain areas, um, you know, just changing it up a little bit. But that has been a lot of fun to do. I love those colors. Yeah, and thank you. That's another thing. This is being stitched with the Prim Aura Floss. Um, you can actually get... It, it comes together for for all of these um, stitches. It comes together in one box. And I really like that Aura, Aura Floss. Mm -hmm. I really do. I like it a lot. It has really nice coverage. And are you using, you're using one strand on yours, right? I am, okay. yeah, because it's over one. Yep. So it'll be a cute little petite size. There are 12 blocks all together. So like I said, that was number four. And the next one that you saw that I'm starting there is number five. And it's called Beauty and Simplicity. And that will be that one. So. Very nice. Thank you. Then I also worked a little bit on my flea market flowers. Oh my gosh. We need a bigger table. Um, let's see here. Show you what I have. This is the pattern by Fat Quarter Shop. And I changed out some of the pinks for more of like an orange tone. Um, and I'm stitching it on 32 count prairie grass. And this is what I have so far. And this is stitched over two, but with one thread. Sweet. I can't uh, wait to see what you're doing with that. <laughs> then I just worked a little bit on. I just the... pulled mine out. Did ya? I did. Um, Oh, I'm just going to show the, my working copy. And this one is called the friendship. Is it called the, our lasting oh, our friendship. lasting friendship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this is a blackbird design piece. And we also, Liz and I want to send our heartfelt, um, regards to Alma after yes. losing her, her friend, Barb. Um, that, that was, uh, she's definitely going to be missed. That's for sure. From everyone but this is what I have so far I'll show you the entire pattern then but these colors are so pretty I love these colors nice and muted um, it is stitched on 46 count hazelwood over two with one strand and this is the entire piece and I'm doing mine on legacy Oh yeah, I just pulled mine out. I don't yeah. have it. I didn't do any work. I was on gonna it. ask you. I was gonna. You needed. Actually, a, you needed a break from that border, didn't you? I did. <laughs> it was I, a timeout. Oh man. <laughs> and you remember the one when we were stitching, and you said, "Liz, there's nothing tricky about yes. that." Yes. Yes, there is. <gasps> no. Yes. What I'll was show tricky? it to you. The only in the one corner. Every time it descended, it descended in a series of two stitches or three. I forget the number between the the five stitches. It would go five, then two, then five, then two up, and five and two, you know, all the way yeah. down. At the corner, three stitches go in the middle. There's one exception to how it proceeds in the corner. But it's uh, only in the corner. Yeah, but right? still, I mean, it's not like, my, my brain wants to just keep going around the corner and do it oh. all, and that the one turn, <laughs> you add a stitch. Anyway. It's like, uh-uh, I'm not falling for this. No, I'm not. I saw it not doing it, and I did not make a mistake. I did oh, good. not have to pull it out, good. but I thought, I have to tell Deb about this because it's funny. It tried to get me. Oh, my gosh. So other than that, I just have two stitching finishes. Well, like a finish and a stitching finish, so 
That's we'll get it. there. We'll get there. That's it. All right. So I worked a little more on the kernel. This was, I think, a little bit in the car. And then, uh, not last night, but the night before. Um, and I just added a few more rows to the to the base here. Sorry. This Victorian cross that I'm doing for the background. Because he's done. So all it is is just filling in the back. And I wanted to do it with this stitch. I know it would go faster if I use a, a broader background stitch, but I'm enjoying learning this Victorian cross and I like the look of it. And I think it'll make a really nice little pillow with that stitch on there. Mm -hmm. It's cute. So, very cute. It's that guy's coming along. <laughs> and then. I oh, think, I was wondering if you finished that one. Well, you remember? Uh, well, I had the figgy pudding done, but do you remember I mentioned to you that I wanted to finish this? in that cookie cutter style yeah, yeah and pat had suggested that i need to broaden that border out so i just kind of free handed out a few more rows because what i had done i laid it on my little inset and it wasn't deep enough yet to get all the way around that oh, that gotcha. form so i'm just broadening that so that when i put it around the form it's going to cover the whole the whole side okay dimension of the form so i'm just playing with that and i did work on that I actually did stitch on that while we were watching a movie down in North Carolina um, at the end of one of our, our days. This is not something I worked on actively, but I pulled it out. If That's you've been watching our videos, stitch. yes, you'll notice that I'm still working through the craft room and going through things. And so I ran across this um, Alessandra Adelaide pattern that I picked up years ago. And I really liked it. It just looked happy to yeah. me. It was a good title for it. And I had started it. I didn't think I was very far along. And I was actually considering just setting it aside and not working on it anymore. Until I realized, oh, I was farther than I thought. I'm about a third of the way through the tree. Yeah. So I thought, I'm going to pull this out and put it with my summer stuff. And work on a little bit. So. And that's on an even weave? This is on just a, I think it's a 28 count even weave that I'm doing it on. Um, I don't know that they actually were explicit about it. I think they, yes, they just told you the stitch number. Okay. Do it on however, whatever you would like to. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I fibbed. They stitched oh. it on 32 count. Um, I think mine may also be 32 count. Yeah, it looks like it is. So, it's just 32 count even weave. Pretty. And that will be fun to continue working on. Mm -hmm. And it's just DMC. And that's one of the things I liked about it. The color palette I thought was really pretty yeah. for, for DMC spring. Cool. So anyway, that'll be fun. And each one of those little swirls and sections of that is mm -hmm. like getting something finished. Yes. You know? So you yeah. get kind of happy about that. Yes. Um, and that's really all I worked on. I wanted to share something though um <laughs> last last video before the floss friends you showed your antique sample oh yeah so while i was going through patterns and my uh, magazine patterns which you'll see some of today i ran across this article from a 2013 cross stitch and needlework magazine so oh I almost love 10 that. years ago i love those magazines the title of this little inset it was a discussion about samplers the title is Don Lewis, Five Tips for Buying Your Own Antique Sampler. Ah! You want to see how you did? You ready? <laughs> First, do your homework. Learn as much as you can about samplers before you buy. Well, <laughs> if you don't know it's there, how do you do your homework, right? I mean, you're at an auction. Yeah. Uh, buy from a reputable and knowledgeable antiquities dealer. <laughs> Most of the ones I hear about people are finding in people's sales. They're not finding them at now, dealerships. Yeah, yeah. Condition, condition, condition. It's important that you can, oh, excuse me. It's important for finding a piece that will retain its value. Huh. I would think the value is in the eye of the beholder. Yes, yes. So I'm not sure how you, how you scale that. Hmm. And then buy what you can afford. <laughs> I guess there are very few needlework financing companies. <laughs> and it says buy the best quality that you can afford, but don't spend more than you really should. Okay. That's really sound advice. And then 
don't walk away exclamation point this is easily the hardest lesson to learn about collecting antiques of any kind if you really love a sampler if it's calling your name don't walk away thinking you can come back and get it later that's true many times it'll be sold when you return for it of course you need to make sure you want it but walking away is a big risk remember if you walk away you may never see it again <laughs> <laughs> i just thought that was kind of, kind of funny little article <laughs> making sure you get that's your sample funny. purchase correct <laughs> That's like, that's why the um, auctioneer looked at me and said, you came for this, didn't you? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Last week, I jokingly said to Deb, we ought to start a new segment called What You Didn't See or What You Didn't Know. Mm -hmm. Because we always <laughs> look down. what you didn't down. know you didn't see. <laughs> yes. Because we always look down and we see something we forgot to share. <laughs> so we had gone out shopping, Deb and I, um, two weeks ago, and... I came across a felt hat that I was so happy with. I think I paid maybe 20 cents for this little guy. But this pattern, Tummy Toppers, came out 1995. So years and years ago. And I still had <laughs> a snowman. A naked snowman. I had stitched one of them and given it away. <laughs> but somehow in this whole craft room this looks like relocation... I lost his hat. Aww. So, oh, now no. it's found. Now he's not naked anymore. Now he's not. Good. And so this is a cute little stitch. I just am not sure. I, I know what fabric I'm going to use. I just haven't decided. I think I'm going to do the snowman half heart too because I'm, <laughs> I may actually find another pattern to put in there. Cute. But that's what you didn't see was the hat because I cute. forgot to pull that out last time. <laughs> it was actually just sitting down here staring at me at the end of our last video. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Excuse me. Yep. And then one other thing I forgot to mention to you about summer. You're traveling, you're looking around. Needle Travel, awesome book. Deb bought me this a year ago um, as a birthday gift. It has all the needle workshops that were around when it was published. They also have an app on your mm -hmm. app store on iPhones. And I'm sure there's an Android version of it. So you can put it on your phone and no matter where you are, mm -hmm. you put in the zip code or the town and state and it will tell you exactly where the needle workshops are and what type of needle workshop it is, whether it's yarn, mm -hmm. cross stitch, yeah. needle Quilting, point. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is a great summer tool. Did Rick try to hide that book from you? <laughs> <laughs> Can't find it, Liz. Sorry. I looked in advance <laughs> and I was really surprised because in the trip we took, it was a straight shot with nothing around. It oh, was like, wow, somebody darn. needs to put a shot somewhere between North Carolina and where we live yeah. because that was boring. <laughs> <laughs> That's just wrong. It was. There was definitely something wrong with that. <laughs> I picked up a couple oh, of yeah, things. Oh, yeah, you showed him last time. He's so cute. Did I show yeah. him? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I did pick up this stocking pattern, and I wasn't sure. You might actually have this in your collection of stocking patterns, but I thought it was really pretty. Um, uh, it has the old Lang Syne stocking. No, I don't have that one. I didn't think no, I had it cute. in mine. If I had the chimney with care. Cute. Yeah. It says three stockings for... I don't think the, I do. The back of it actually would be a good... Oh, yeah. If you wouldn't mind yeah. holding that up. Okay. These are the three that are in it. And I was drawn my attention to the New Year's one the um, in the days of Old Lang Syne because I, I don't really have anything that yeah. reflects that part of our Christmas holidays. Cute. Or the winter holidays. I picked up a skein of Nature Trail. I thought that Ooh, was a really pretty. pretty color. Very pretty. Um, I had not had that Cute. in my stash and I was <laughs> doing inventory the other day <laughs> this is pretty now this pattern I am very excited with it's a new pattern by um, Liz Matthews it's called Clara Hansen and I just thought it was gorgeous mm -hmm. and I'm actually thinking about doing it for my kitchen and I'm playing in my mind right now with the idea of doing it with a variegated thread okay um, or not variegated, uh, over dyed is what I meant to say. And well, that's pretty fabric. I may end up using this fawn by Lakeside Linen, but I'm also using some of this fawn, I think, to do my indigo and my token of love samplers by Brenda Gervais. Mm. So I have to see exactly how that plays out and if I have enough fabric for that. But okay. anyway, so those were 
relatively nice. new nice. to me. And is there anything else in the new category? <laughs> I don't think so. No. So let's see. Um, how about I show, let's see. Do you want to talk a little bit about Fat Corner Shop? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yes. So we love the upcoming stitch along that they're going to have called Kaleidoscope. And, oh, hello. And so we did show you last uh, video we did together of the book, and it's called Kaleidoscope. And the pattern um, for the, you can do the quilt pattern, and you can also do the um, cross stitch pattern. So here's just two colorways to show you. But we think they're just beautiful, and we definitely want to join in on this. This will be um, started in August, but Liz and I, um, thanks to Fat Quarter Shop, we were able to pick our fabric and some threads that we um, can decide what to use. So I think for my fabric, I'm going to do 36 count. Um, it's called Cream and Sugar. I think that's so, so cool. I love the name of it. It's, it's very, a very pretty, pretty color. Um, yeah, just a real nice uh, neutral. And what color? Did you get 36? This is 36. Yeah. And then I have been loving stitching with the, um, the Aura Fill thread. So I went through the Fat Quarter Shop website and just chose some colors that I really just fell in love with. And I just stuck them all in this bag to show you. But um, I really do love the coverage that this gives you. And they have a nice sheen to them, you know, kind of like in place of like a DMC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really, we really enjoy that. So, and that's six stranded cotton, right? Yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember there's quite a few yards on these. I'm trying to remember how many yards is on there, but um, I really do like it. I like stitching with them. So I'm not sure which colorway mm -hmm. I'm going to go with for the kaleidoscope yet, but uh, are you using your spool holder for your well, I, when I got here and I looked up there, I thought, oh man, I'm going to have to get another one <laughs> <laughs> because these will fit in. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, oh no, I think it's just out of the frame. But Liz had shown, what is it called? Spool pods. Spool pods. Yeah, and these will fit in the spool pods. So mm -hmm. that's Yeah, I that's think pretty that cool. like video 134 might have been when we yeah. showed those. Yeah, Yes. And you, I love I this color. I picked up Cypress. You might recognize this because I had the same color in Ada for my serendipity piece, but I bought it in the 36 count. That is so pretty. It is gorgeous, and it'll look really nice um with that kaleidoscope pattern mm -hmm. um i am still a little bit uncertain about my color choices but i chose um a thread packet that they had called autumn and it's their weeks dye works yeah thread packet um uh, at fat quarter shop yeah and some of these will look real pretty on here but i'm thinking i may pull a few other colors as well mm -hmm. uh and see how they look with that fabric it's like everything else, people come mm -hmm. into the shop and they say, it's so nice to be able to see the fabric with my threads. And yeah. It, and it can make a huge difference yes. when you lay your floss down and you do what yes. people refer to as a floss yes. toss and check it out. And both of the fabrics that Liz and I showed you, um, they are from Fiber on a Whim yes. fabrics. And you can get them through Fat Quarter Shop. Um, and I, also, if you are loving that kaleidoscope, make sure you stick around. I picked up a couple other things just um, for grins. I did get some 26 needles by Bowen. Mm -hmm. um, these are interesting. And I forget, I think these were the 20. Okay, I'm gonna look this up. I cannot remember what it was about these needles and why I bought them. Um, but I got <laughs> that pack of needles by Bowen as well. Um, and then I got some sharps by Tulip for my finishing work. I think I was looking for 26 and 28. I, I'm, I don't think so though. I don't think those are 28. They're, I will research that. That'll be something I can share with you on our next video. Cause okay. I cannot recall when I saw those, why, why I ordered those, Yeah. but there was a yeah. reason. They actually have a really nice eye on them. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. They're very nice. Cool. Eye. Cool. All right, should I we? I think so too. <laughs> that was our subscriber tribute bell that went off. Yes. Um, so we'll we get to thank some subscribers. We want to thank everybody who subscribes. Can I just set that there for a second? Where it falls off. Thank you. I'm done with it. Um, oh, perfect. So 
And we also had some giveaways in, in um, our last video that we did together. Uh, we'll save that one for last. Okay, so let's start with our subscriber tributes. How about that, Liz? Sounds good. All right. That's what the bell's all about. All right, so our first subscriber that we would like to say a special thank you to um, is Irene Potter, and you'll be getting some Christmas <laughs> stitches, so you can have them done in plenty of time. You got lots of, lots of months. Um, this is a Stony Creek book, and it's called Christmas Memories, and there's quite a few patterns in this book. And you will also, thank you, mm -hmm. be getting, sorry about this, we need a larger table. <laughs> Mercy. Okay. Um, this is Mary Wishes, and it's a Lynn Brand Tesh design. Did you do this one, Liz? That looks familiar. Did I you bought that, that one. I bought that pattern um, when you and I were huh. at the Jubilee, I think. Oh, okay. But I okay. did not stitch it. Yeah, very cute. All right. Very so very that cute. goes to Oops. Irene Potter. Sorry. Thank you very much, Irene. And our next subscriber tribute goes to... <laughs> Ugh. Okay, Zephy Constantinis or Constantin, how do you say it? <laughs> it's a very long name, but Zephy is a very unusual first name. So yeah. Zephy, Z E F F Y. And then, would you like me to spell the last name? K O N S T A N T I N D I S. <laughs> You're our subscriber, second yes, subscriber. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Um, and you will be getting some summer-ish summer -ish stitches. Um, this is called French Impressionist. There's that one. That front pattern Isn't there that pretty? on the front yeah. reminds me a little of the Old Bay Colony. Oh yeah? Designs, you know, with the lighthouses and the cool. beach scenes. Very pretty. And also, uh, this is called a Victorian Welcome. Um, that's really cute. It's by Dimensions. If you like houses, that's yeah, a pretty pattern. Very pretty. All right, so thank you very much. Um, my email address is in the description box if you can get a hold of me, and I'll get those out to you. Then, last week, all right, we had um, a keyword flowers, and that was for the flea market flowers pattern and also the number 12 of the Prim Stitch series. And that goes to Jo Lee. So congratulations, Jo Lee. We also had a keyword girl for the Sunbonnet Sue cross stitch pattern. And that was cute for how many people were talking about, yes, my grandmother made me those quilts or I still have some of those cut out. That was so cool. Um, and that is with the threads. And that goes to Penelope D. Then we had two um, uh, patterns from Expanding Stitches, Martina, and um, hopefully you all got to check out her floss tube. She um, gave us permission to print out her patriotic chart, and we have two of those to give away. Really, really cool, beautiful chart. And these two go to Deborah Nicholas, or it's N-I-C-K-L-A-U-S, and Sue McNally. And I want to hold one of those until we get back to talk about I was going to say, this. are we going to... Yeah, you want to talk about it now? Yeah, or you let's do, the do last that. One? We only have um, one more giveaway, right? Well, we have two more giveaways oh, okay. for this video later. Okay. Um, but let's... Yeah. So, this is originally a PDF pattern. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Martina. We, we really love it. What we want to talk about for a few moments is this little piece right here. <laughs> this is a Ben Q e reader. We've shown two, maybe three other forms of lighting for mm -hmm. stitching, and this is one that we've been using for the last couple months to, to see how it works for us. It has some features that are incredible, but first, I'm going to swing it a little bit, show you the whole profile of it, because that's one of the things that makes this so unique. Mm -hmm. Now, this will give you a pivot point for the top arm and then the bottom also pivots so you have the ability to make huge changes in how this sits the design of the light in this curved fashion 
distributes the light across the screen if you're in front of a computer or across your notebook or across your, your laptop, whatever device you're using. Yeah, and it's called a smile curve technology and it expands to 35 inches, yes. which is incredible. It also has a feature on it. You can right now see the orange light at the top, mm -hmm. uh, right, well, it's, it's difficult to see, but yeah, right near my hand is an orange light. And this tells you that it's in the book mode and it has an ambient adjustment. So it will sense the other light in the room and has an auto function where it will adjust it to be proper for your eyes. If you have a need for more light, then this dial allows you to control the, the light mm -hmm. setting to turn it up or down. The same thing is true. That's better at getting it to respond <laughs> to a finger than I do. <laughs> this ring is your source for changing things. It turns it on and off. That goes to one setting that goes to the other setting, which is your e-reader setting. Mm -hmm. And then again, when that's in mode, it will automatically adjust or you can dial the intensity of that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. It's really wonderfully relaxing for your eyes. Yeah. We were quite impressed. Yeah. So if you yeah. do a lot of PDF stitching, mm -hmm. which is why we, yep. we tied this into our discussion yep. about Martina's patterns, is because it will give you that added comfort level and the transition between your needlework mm -hmm. and needing the light for your yeah. needlework and then the screen itself, mm -hmm. it keeps you from having that effect where your eyes get tired yeah, and yeah. it's hard to focus. Yeah, so again, this, this is awesome. Uh, we really enjoy the product. We were asked to review it, check it out, and we, we, we do like it a lot. And we wanted to make sure we share it with you because we like to, you know, help you out with anything that we come across that we think you you might love also so another lighting option for you yes and we're gonna link this in the description box it's Ben Q e reading light mm -hmm. and I also want to mention that there is a smaller version and I'll show you a picture of that and it's called a genie and that arm you can bend it so far which is really cool you know if you're laying back kind of in your recliner or whatever and it, honestly it's not going anywhere because this base is so heavy yes. i mean it's, we were like shocked and they actually have a warning do not drop on your toe yeah you i don't, mean it's you don't it's pounds <laughs> it definitely but offsets the weight and yeah the, and the distribution of that yeah. arm but i love oh, how sorry. Oh, sorry i did love how far it can stretch yes yeah. i actually can put it at the back side of my stitching table yeah. and have it come over me and then there are settings where you are supposed to place the actual lamp itself and it shows you the positions for the best lighting for what you're doing so yeah. there's a lot of information with it but this is called the genie would you mind holding uh, yep. that um, this is a smaller version of the same light and it just has an one straight arm to it yeah and that's uh, more of a task lamp mm -hmm. so yeah so if you're interested check them out yes and thank you very much to Ben yes, Q for thank you. sharing that with us and letting us um, thank you explore their product okay so um we would fat quarter shop was gracious enough to um send us a bundle for the kaleidoscope yes for one of our lucky viewers so you would be receiving the kaleidoscope book the vintage cloth from Lori holt and it's in the color cloud it is 25 count this is what the model in the book was stitched on and you also get the entire kaleidoscope dmc thread pack to go with it so if you are interested in that how about use the keyword kaleidoscope in your comment please make sure you spell it just like it's written here oh, yeah got it so Perfect. Pause this, write that down, <laughs> because I'm only going to do one search through the comments. So yep. make sure that you've spelled it yep. just like it's written. Yes. And please be a subscriber. Um, and we would also like to do another giveaway, and we want to say a huge thank you to Greg. Um, I got to go to Greg's house the other day. Um, he lives in Delaware, so my husband and I took a trip. He had something that he wanted to um, 
bless us with and he says hello he's actually a member of our guild um, but he had some things that he wanted to pass along and this is a full kit with threads and fabric from the hearts content and it is um, colonial yorktown virginia sampler so this is what it looks like and if you would be interested in this kit how about leave the word virginia in your comment section it's a beautiful sampler um thank you again greg so much it was lovely meeting you that was a lot of fun and i will say from uh, my experience with the hearts content kits the instructions are incredible there's a lot of detail mm -hmm. oftentimes there's multiple types of stitches and the threads are very very uh basic a lot of dmc and i was working on a little biscornu and it was my first attempt at over one on 40 count and i found it very very straightforward all of the instructions and everything for the kit so i think you'll enjoy it and if you like to to do your own self-teaching it's a great <laughs> tool <laughs> it was a very good tool for that all right are we on to finishes nope 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 I'm going to talk about a couple patterns. Ooh. Deb hasn't seen these yet. My collection. <laughs> I have, I had actually a box of patterns that came from magazines. I had gone through taking out the patterns I wanted. And then as I was going back through it, I thought well, there are some that are really different. Yeah. So these are actually, um, there's a series of these and I really liked them. They are, door hangers and if you'll just hold that mm -hmm. up deb it shows all three of the seasons down in the yeah, bottom there. i do remember this one but the winter is my favorite and then this one's the summer so you can compare those so two cool. i have the summer on the this big is one the winter one that they're showing there and then there's all three and i started two of these oh you I, did i think it's these two that i actually got started oh, i haven't changed the cow's out. color to hank's coloring <laughs> Yes, it would have to be Hank. That's right. Aww, and uh, what I liked about them is it's all DMC. Yeah. And if you do it, it's almost full coverage. You can do it well, on that's Ada what I was or thinking. Linen. Yeah. You can use a larger count. It is. And it's it's super fast. Stitch. You're right. It's completely full coverage. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'm surprised you didn't do the winter one because the well, Cardinals. I'm, I think that's the one I started with. Oh, okay. I, Okay. This was the one I did after. But okay. And you, I'm sure you did say this. It's the March 2008 issue of Cross Stitch and Needlework. I hadn't yet. Oh, thank sorry. you. Sorry. No, that's it's, good because I hadn't. I sorry. handed it to you. <gasps> oh. Now, Deb has often referenced our pattern that we mm. got. Um, in fact, I think this was the week that we went, and Deb had just come from a really bad week at home. And I think I grabbed these for us on our way out the door or the pack to go with it or something. Is that when I was sick with my migraine mm -hmm. and I didn't get to attend it? No. Nope. That's that's this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I made sure we had these to go home with. And this is the pattern that was charted for the event. Yeah. So the Jubilee for 2010. And for Christmas that year then, Liz got me the thread pack and the fabric. Yeah. So it's that, so pretty. I really need to start that. And I pulled it out because I had not uh, even run across it for a while. I had forgotten I had put it in with those other patterns. And then this was a really pretty summer pattern that was in a catal uh, catalog list yeah. calendar. <laughs> that came off of my keepsake calendar one year. I can't even, well, I could hazard a guess if I, if I grabbed a page. 2011 keepsake calendar. That's oh, okay. where this one came from. Yeah, that's really pretty. I like that on that blue. Oh, yeah, I do like that. Cute. I do like With that. With the bees? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even you don't even have to stitch the word sunflower if you don't want to. Look at mm -hmm. what a cool pillow that would be. That's like yes. if you did that design and made it into a summer pillow. Oh, I, and you're so going to see something pretty. similar in just a second. Oh, I like this. This is by Susan Fouts. It was just a really cute again, summer pattern. And this is from the Leisure Arts magazine that I used to get monthly, and I don't even think I have the Cute. the issue. Um, I don't. This page didn't have that reflected on it. Hmm. Uh, now these will make your juices flow. Oh yeah. 
I absolutely love that <gasps> pumpkin pillow. Oh, I love it. Isn't that oh, gorgeous? Oh, wow, look at that. That's crazy pretty. And then this fall pattern, oh I absolutely, gosh. I wish this was a small, but it's a full-size pillow. I'm trying to think of how, how large of a count fabric or how, oh my gosh. how small my I linen would have it. to be to make that a small, but they're gorgeous. Oh my word. What is this from? Just Cross Stitch. Yeah, those are old Just Cross Stitch magazines. 2000 oh, and, let's gosh. see. 1999. 1999 and 2000. 2000. Or 2000. No, okay. this is, okay, that's so right. This? It was a series, I believe. Oh, really? In those, you know how they would do it in the quarters? Yeah, yeah. I think that was four pillows. Okay. And those were the two that So I, this one is October 2000. And this one is December 1999. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Those are my colors. Ah, oh, I might have to stitch this one. And I, when I saw this pattern, it's by Nicole Dostal. Um, the first thing that jumped out at me was to me, this looked like a pillow so as well. Cute. But it's a. Oh, isn't that pretty? It's tulips. <gasps> it looks like something else you're stitching. It does. It looks like yeah. one of my ink circle designs, doesn't it? Um. No. Oh, I know which what? one you're thinking uh, of. It's a um, rosewood yeah. manor. Yes. 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 Yes, a sampler we're doing. Yep. Cool. Now, these guys are comical. This is by Lori Bingham. Um, she was at the Jubilee when Deb and I were there, but I didn't take a class Aww. from her. But it was one of the first three-dimensional cross-stitch so pieces cute. I had seen. And it's a little scarecrow. Oh, my gosh. Isn't it cute? Yeah. And then this is another three-dimensional piece. I think this one is on... This is Cross Stitch and Country Craft, September, October, 1995. And this is July, August, 1990, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Oh, and it's Santa. Oh, my done. gosh. Look how cute. I just thought they were... You know, when oh, I was going my through... my gosh. We have lots of samplers and things, but these are... These three-dimensional ones cute. are kind of fun. And again, with the pillows, you'd think I have a few of them if I keep all the patterns. But oh, look how cute. These are from England. This Aww. was, um, which one? Cross Stitcher, November 2011. Wow. And this was Cross Stitcher, oh. December 2011. They kind of go yeah. together. They look cute in your kitchen, too. And we're doing a trunk show at Stitches Unlimited right now. And one of the main pieces that came was Noah's Ark with all the animals to stitch. And then Mr. and Mrs. Noah were there. And I ran across these two Noah's Ark patterns. This sampler, birth sampler, I absolutely love. Cute. I've not had the occasion to do it for anyone. But if the occasion should come up, <clears throat> I would like to stitch that for my next grandchild. Which I don't know when that'll be. Uh, or if it will be, but <laughs> this is good. another Noah's Ark also, and this Noah's Ark, and that one came from Just Cross Stitch. Does it have an issue at the bottom on the front? February 2007. Thank you. That's a mechanism nursery was in Noah's Ark. I think I showed the sampler a long time ago I did for her. That was a Dimensions gold kit. Uh-huh. And mm -hmm. this one is November, December 1992. Noah's Ark. Oh, what's on the back of that? I like that. Yeah, it's American Barnes, but I doubt I have the rest of the pattern. That's cute. Now, I just was wondering, this looks like somebody I would recognize. Hmm. Uh, cool. Who did this? That looks like Dimensions, doesn't it? Well, I was thinking it reminded me a little of Teresa Wensler's style. Too, oh, yeah? But I'm not... Hmm. Um, mama, 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 Want me to look while you're going through? Yeah. Sometimes, oh, Serendipity Designs. Serendipity Designs okay. did that. Um, these are just a little bit of folk art. We were looking at some of the modern folk art patterns, and then, uh, of course, all the fractor patterns by uh, Kathy Barrick and Lottie Da. And this is, again, an English folk art pattern that was in the magazine Cross Stitcher, July 2011. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That pattern, I have two of them here. This one is actually Christmas 2010. 
and it was this summer pattern that I pulled out uh, that's done on perforated paper that's a little oh, bit of yeah. um, the pinwheel. Cute. And this one is the July 2011 pattern. And then I thought this was adorable. Oftentimes you'll see ladies with bandanas or handkerchiefs on. This was July 2011 Cross Stitcher Magazine. And they just did a pretty little design for the back of that scarf. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. thought that was really cute. Um, and then back to something that's a little more unusual. This was something that got my attention for my twins. Um, the World of Cross Stitching is the one that this came from. And the issue is up for grabs. <laughs> Um, doesn't actually have the month written on it, but it's called Find the Fun. But it's a little like help with dishes, oh, dust yeah. around, pick up the pick up the toys sort of thing, and you do one on each side. So it's a chore. It's a chore block, is what it is, and you toss it, <laughs> and then they do whatever chore comes up. <laughs> You'd have to be really, really organized to want to stitch that and use it. <laughs> be a fun little thing to play with, though. And this. Does this look French to you? Yes. Yeah, me too. It's not cute. I thought it was. Really simple little stitch. Oh, wait. Let me see. French colors. Yeah. French design. Reminds me of Paris. That's too cute. And it's actually, I thought that was stitched lace across there, but it's not. It's a real piece of lace. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was added to it. I like the way they embellished it with the buttons and the I lace. I do too. And the real needle. Mm -hmm. And I, that's really adorable. I think adorable. that's a spool of thread mm -hmm. sitting on the little it frame is. itself. Yeah. It's like a little shadow box. Mm -hmm. So cute. Cute little finish. And not a lot of stitching. No. Just uh -uh. cute for a crafter. Here, this was interesting. They used waste canvas to stitch these and stitched it on felt, which mm -hmm. I thought was really unique. So your felt becomes oh, your background. Uh, yes. And then they said if you want to use cream colored felt instead of white, you don't even have to stitch the background. Wow. So. Yeah. And then this little animal pattern. Huh. Uh, oops. I thought that was Hello. a cute little nursery pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And last was, they called it the Great Outdoors. Uh, it's June 2012, and it's just a cute little design. And they broke that pattern out several different oh my ways. Gosh. Um, within the Within the way they can hmm. do it. Very cool. So those were the patterns I was having fun with. Um, there's, there's a lot more where that came from, but <laughs> just a little sampling. Oh, I like it. All right, so you were about ready. To look at finishes, right? Oh, okay. Yes. After you do finishes, I'll do dash box. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's going to be quick. I only have two. Um, I had shown a, um, a hand-painted um, folk art plate that I had bought at a consignment shop right up the road. And when I saw it, I knew I wanted to put some stitching on the inside of it. So I found um, a little design from part of the um, Mystery Sampler 2017 Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler. And I used the colors that are in the plate. So there's only three colors that I'm using. Um, just picked from my sash. And this is the finish. So now I have to go ahead and mount it to the plate and hopefully get that to you soon. I love so that's, those colors with that fabric. I do too. Is that legacy? Yes. Okay. Right? It looks like it. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it is. Um, yeah. Very pretty. So thank you get that finished and then um i had finally completely finished my serendipity stitch along i finished the stitching and i showed you that but then i wanted to show you how i um completely finished it so this was the charity stitch along through fat quarter shop um this is their rendition of it you could stitch it right like that as is or change everything up which i did so um we received a really adorable um, sewing or stitching kind of. Um, it's just a little project. Yeah, project. It's not, it's not a bag or anything, but yeah, there's lots of pockets. You can put things into beautiful fabric, um, felt that you can stick your little needles into. And this was made 
for us from Linda. Linda. And um, when I decided to finish my stitching, I saw this laying on the counter in my craft room and immediately knew that I wanted to put that on the front of it because the colors are just perfect. They are. So that's what I did. I lined the back of it with some interfacing to make it stiff and then I found that cute little braided edge to put around it and a bow with the button at the bottom because then you can wrap you know, your little tie around the button to keep it closed. And um, I was very happy with how it turned out. I thought it was really cute. Very pretty. So that's what I did there. Very nice. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that was really cool. I like those colors together. Aww. And I didn't even have this in mind when I picked the colors to stitch that. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so, oh, that's pretty cool. That is. All right, that is it. Okay, I have two little things. I told Deb I was going to work on a third thing. Throw out everything on the floor now. I decided the third thing would oh. wait because I didn't want to rush it. So, I showed you the pillows that I had done, and then I showed you one last pillow that was a Christmas ornament from the Just Cross Stitch magazines um, that I was doing a beading treatment to around the outside, and that's what I finished. <laughs> treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I finished all of my beading and mm -hmm. put that together. I actually wrapped that up last night, and I made a little beaded, um, what should I call yeah, it? Yeah, I like uh, your little hanger. Loop for the top. Yeah. Are you going to hang it then from your I don't know if it'll go on the tree or are you going to put it not? in the dough bowl? I don't know. It might go on Christmas tree. It'll sit in the dough bowl too. I mean, that's, yeah. I figured I could do it either way. Yeah. And I just wanted to have something there in the event I wanted to hang it on the tree that I I wouldn't have to go into the fabric with it. You know, I could yeah. put a hook on it. Yeah. So that little guy. Then this next thing I'm going to show you, I actually stitched in ninth grade. I was at St. Vincent's Academy, which was an all-girls school in <laughs> Barksdale, Louisiana, which Shreveport was actually where we were. Base was Barksdale, and it was actually at Lake Jackson, but, or I'm, Jacksonville. Forget all that. <laughs> we were at Barksdale Air Force Base. This was a class where we weren't supposed to take our full lunch time to eat. They thought that was just too long, so they said we were going to have a mini course. Oh. So instead of having 40 minutes as a lunch break, we got 20 minutes to eat, and then we had to be in some kind of a mini course. And this was the Needlepoint mini course. We had to design our own nine-section piece and do nine different stitches and pick our own threads. And I cannot tell you where my head was when I pulled these two threads. I no, I can't. Yeah, you were in ninth grade. I think it was what mom had in a bin that oh, she wasn't using. Yeah. I think that was my choices. Yeah. So these were the colors. Um, at the time, they looked pink and blue. No, it's more like salmon, salmon. and blue. Yeah. And yeah. not really. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> anyway, so it sat for a long time, and I took it in, and I had it finished at Stitches Unlimited into a pillow, and I could not believe the fabric that Pat found that actually matches that salmon color. And so they finished it into this pillow for me. <laughs> and now it's no longer just twisted up and sticking in the bottom of the drawer. <laughs> this was so out of shape. That was probably one of the biggest challenges was because we didn't have a frame. Yeah. And we were doing this in our hands. And so with all these different stitches, the canvas was really torqued by the time we were done. Um, maybe more so mine than others because I had so many different uh, shapes to my stitches and the way they drew up. But anyway, so that was the other one. I got that back. So I did have one other thing I wanted to show if I can put my hands on it. Um, there it is. Right under the stash box. I found this finish. I have two full samplers on the wall um, when I get the craft room done and we show the craft room, you'll see them. But they're a series by Nancy Rossi who designed, still designs, but she designed a lot of patterns um, in the 80s and 90s and was in a lot of magazines. This one was out of a magazine. Uh, it was a cross-stitch and country crafts issue 
January, February, 1993. The first one of her patterns I found, I was visiting here. My daughter was two and I was pregnant with Kevin and I found it in a stitching outlet in Rockville. Oh, wow. And that was the one that says Country Collection. Uh -huh. Came with the thread and everything. So then I found the other one as a flyer, a pamphlet, and that was a companion piece. And then this one shows up in the magazine and all these colors are similar and the style of the samplers are similar. And I stitched this one out in Illinois. And this one I finished in, I think it was, I didn't date it, okay. Mm -mm. But I finished it in Illinois, so it had to be before 2009, because that's when we came back here. So this will be the companion. And I had forgotten it was in my finished bin. And I have a lot of other things in there, but this one I want to get framed. And then Deb and I looked at the two I have, and we're going to reframe one of them to make it look a little more contemporary, because it's framed on one of those enamel <laughs> frames from the 1990s. And um, is this on Ada? Yes. That was stitched on Ada. So were the other two. Oh, all you, three. You of them. finished this in 08. Do I have it? Is that what that is? Okay, so it was the year before I moved back here. <laughs> is that what that is? I did. Well, I saw the stitched by up yeah, here, and I was looking funny. for the date up here, but I yeah. didn't notice that. Yeah. Okay, so 2008. Yeah. It's a little bit brighter of colors than the ones you have over there. Yes. They're more muted. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, anyway, you'll see the series. And I actually still have two other patterns by Nancy that would go with these samplers, but I decided three was enough. I didn't want to do the other two. Yeah, I think we actually have them as giveaways. Very cool. Very, very cool. Party. So let's talk stash box. Okay. All right. Not quite as varied as some or stash of them. bag. <laughs> yeah, stash, stash bubble wrap. Yeah. Um, but in my continued craft room paring down, I had this, I believe this was actually given to me by my sister, um, but it's really nice for storing small things, embellishments, um, little stitching tools. There's four of those that all fit together in this little holder. Mm -hmm. And I went ahead and threw in a needle mine, or excuse me, a needle threader, some needle rings that you can attach to a project um, envelope or needle roll if you have one that you've made, and then some wonder clips just to, it's like you can't give a wallet without money in it. I didn't think you could give a gadget holder without gadgets in it. So there you go, you got some gadgets. And then, this book is called Hanging by a Thread by Monica Ferris. If you haven't read any of her books, she has several out. They're all a stitching theme. They have a character named Betsy Devonshire who owns a needle workshop. This is just a fun read. It doesn't take very long. But the fun part was that there's a free cross-stitch pattern in each one. <laughs> this is so funny because the patterns are so funny. Oh my gosh. This cute. was the one that came with it. It's a it's a spider hanging from a web. Um, and that goes with the title, Hanging by a Thread. Oh, got you. Okay. So anyway, and Cute. one of them I have looks just like a little snowflake in the back. But mm -hmm. if you enjoy like a light fiction story, that's a good book. Yep. Now these three patterns that I included, um, two of them have fabric with them. It's Floba. And they both have something stitched on them because this was a class I took at my very first retreat that we went with mom to um, Spirit of Cross Stitch Festival. This was by Liz Turner Deal. Um, I stitched a lot of her things back in the day. These are little Christmas ornaments. They're really cute. That's a new bunny. And they have different stitches in them, which is what I really liked. And that's a snowman. Oh, Oops. sorry, Liz. And then this little one is really cute and has some really interesting stitch effects to it too. And this is Christmas Mouse. So if you would like a set of Christmas patterns. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's included in the stash box. Okay. So just email Country Stitchers. It's in the description box. Um, 
with your name and address when I choose the person for this stash box. It'll be in the next video. In the comments, if you're interested in the contents of this stash box, put stash box. Mm -hmm. And two all, words, right? Or all, what would you like? Two words. Two words, okay. That's great. Okay. And um, then when I select the comment, we'll just need your address and I'll give you the information on how to pay the postage and it'll right. be yours. All right. And there were a lot of people interested in the fabric stash box we did. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, and so far, it seems like people are really having a good time with them. Yeah. So I'm glad. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Perfect. All right. And now, Gadget Corner. Down to Gadget Corner. All right. Gadget Corner is brought to you by Clover. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the picture first of the box because um, it's a macaroon. And it is actually a needle minder slash sharpener. And it's so cute. It is cute. <laughs> it's very, very tiny. It's not much bigger than your average needle minder. So that side has a magnet and it holds your needles. And the filling, if you will, on your <laughs> macaroon <laughs> is what holds the material to sharpen your needles. So you simply insert your needle from the side into the contents. You give a little squeeze and you go back and forth with your needle and you can feel it sort of compress on the tip and it sharpens your needle. Mm -hmm. It's very, very clever. Um, it does come in this lovely shade of green <laughs> or pink. Those are your two options. Mm -hmm. um, not what I would consider my normal macaroon color, <laughs> but anyway, so this is a needle sharpener and needle minder combined. Oh, I love macaroons. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do too. In fact, we had some mm. at one of our gatherings down in North Carolina. Did you? Mm -hmm. mm. And we had some at the at the shower too. Yes, mm, those were those really were tasty. really good. Yeah, <laughs> and that was yeah. the kind of shower I'm talking about. Yeah, they are really good. So that is by Clover. I will put a link to Clover in the description box and okay. let you know where you can find that. All right. Along with a couple other things we talked about today. Wonderful. And. We will be back again mm -hmm. during this summertime. Yes. And did you want to say anything about the day treat? Hmm. <laughs> yes. Actually, day treat's coming up August 7th. We are full. I mm -hmm. did put a note to that effect on our video, the, the thumbnail of our video where we talked about the registration. Thank you to everyone who showed interest. We had a very nice response. Mm -hmm. um, you had to be the early bird to yeah. catch the worm. Like I'll tell really you that. Really early. Yes. Thanks for everybody who stayed up. Yes. <laughs> wow, that was late. People Goodness. stayed up and waited to send an email right at the beginning yeah. of July 7th. Um, then after I got through, I, I um, contacted people, let them know we we're, we're done with the whole registration yeah. process. Yes. It was wonderful. Thank you yes. very much for helping um, get that done. And the one thing we didn't discuss in our last video, should you be watching this one, and if you didn't get through the body of the email I sent you, we're going to do a swap table. Mm -hmm. And so if you have anything that you want to pass along, something you bought two of or you didn't get around to stitching, whatever your reason for it, you can bring it along, put it on the, the swap table, and maybe you'll find something there to take back and do instead. So that and all of the information is still in that video description box. If you want to go back and refresh your memory, mm -hmm. it's video 135. Yes. And bring your favorite snack along. Um, I think we mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we're looking forward to having a really good time. Yeah, yeah. And Hopefully uh, you're all enjoying your summer, yes. wherever you are. And then the only other thing I wanted to say was um, hello to any of my relatives who might be watching. Um, I met a lot of people I hadn't met before in North Carolina who were who were kind of surprised that I had a YouTube channel. Um, and it became well known when people came up to me at the church. <laughs> and then also um, hello to the girls. I know I won't see Kylie and Kelsey next week, but the twins... Casey and Carly are coming to visit with Carrie, and they'll be here Monday. I Yay! can't believe that's like three <laughs> days from now. I'm going to have little arms around my neck. Aww. It's going to be exciting. I'm still on the fence. 
ride along to BWI, not ride along, because I have to work on Tuesday. So I'm mm. thinking ride along, and then I can do a little visiting Tuesday evening before uh, everybody gets back here and heads to bed. They won't be in real late, though. 7 yeah. o'clock's not too late. Oh, no. no. We'll do dinner. Mm. I think we decided we'll do dinner when we get back here. But nice. Oh, so fun. Anyway, we're excited. That's so going to be a, a big event, and they'll be here for, um, I'm thinking, a couple weeks, maybe. Um, oh, wow. So we'll get okay. a lot of visiting in while they're here. Nice. A lot of hug right. time. Well, don't forget all the keywords if you're interested in any giveaways. Um, please be a subscriber, and thank you very much for all of your kind comments. Um, for subscribing, just for all of your support that yes. you always give to us. You're such a blessing. Thank you. And we will see you, well, I don't know. I'm not sure when. <laughs> not too long. We won't make you wait too long. Okay. okay. We enjoy doing this as much as you enjoy doing this. So um, hopefully it'll be, I, I'm not um, restricted to the house during the two weeks of visits. So I'm sure we'll get some time in. All right. Uh, all right. As always. <laughs> Share Share drive me to work. work. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.